I think Betis are going to do it again. I think that Betis, I think, they can take enormous confidence from that game. I think the team's going to be freer from this match. Roma are going to come out, I think, at some point during the game. Not the start, I believe, but at some point, which will make it much more entertaining. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a replica, a 2-1 win for, for Betis, so I'll go with that. Okay, optimistic. <laughs> um, <laughs> What's up, Ente? Welcome back to Stan Sports. We're still in Sevilla, and of course... Uh, we're here for the big one midweek for the Thursday game in the Europa League. Betis hosting Roma. Betis, uh, as we said, looking pretty on top of the group. Um, you know, they've won their first three games. They've been very convincing in all of their games. You know, I watched them against uh, Ludo Goretz, actually a Bulgarian team um, that gave, gave them a fight, to be fair. Um, but ultimately, you know, the Betis' class was just a little bit too much for the Bulgarians. And then going to Rome uh, against all odds, against the Mourinho team that, you know, we know how he plays in Europe and, you know, the, the, the kind of pedigree that he has. He, he didn't want to lose that game for sure. How do you think they approach this game? Um, are they going to be a little bit more comfortable, sit back a little bit, you know, tell Roma, come and get us. You know, you need the points because, let's uh, remember, Roma lost to Luda Goretz in Bulgaria. Um, they got three points, I think. Yep. Just three points out of those nine games. So it's basically a must-win for them. Yes, it is. Yeah, the pressure's certainly more on Roma to, to win this game, to make sure that they get through. I mean, for them, it would be... Well, if they went into the Europa Conference, they could defend their title from last season, but certainly for them, they're thinking on, on, on a greater scale in, in this season's European competitions. But for Betis, yeah, three, three victories, nine points. Almost, yeah, short of of, uh, of of going through to the next round, and and it, with a win, certainly would get them through his first place, which is crucial for getting through. Uh, obviously, uh, don't have to play a, a qualify a, a playoff match against a team dropping down for the Champions League, an extra month off as well from February to March. So there's a there's a lot of motivation for Betis to win this game. The pressure's off certainly from winning that against Roma, which was an incredible match. I, mean, I think Roma are 28 games unbeaten going into that one, and certainly with with Betis going there. Uh, losing Fakir after 20 minutes, going a goal down in uh, such a hot head, uh, hot uh, atmosphere. 65,000 supporters there, 4,000 from Betis, 4,000 yeah. coming from here. So it's, it's yeah, travelled on mass, hoping for a victory, and it was a famous night again for for Betis in Europe. And yeah, I mean, it was one of them that, uh, from a fan's point of view, is much deserved. Betis played the better, uh, started the game well, even uh, conceding the goal, uh, losing Fakir. Shook the team for about five minutes. Specific tactic about shooting outside the box because I was watching that first half and there was like three or four shots. I think Canales took one. I think Guido Rodriguez tried one. I don't know if it was something targeting maybe Roma because maybe the way Mourinho plays, you know, kind of low block uh, inside the penalty box. Um, was that part of it, like shooting outside of the box? I got that feeling as well because there was we we were taking a lot more shots from outside the box than normal. Normally we try and like. Uh, yeah, play pretty much to the, to the to the net. So there was a lot more shoot on sight kind of thing, and maybe I don't know from like the the low block or trying to uh, yeah ru ruffle the the goalkeeper early on. But certainly there was a lot of shots from 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 outside. Certainly, and uh, yeah, I mean one of them from uh, Fakir hit the post, very very unlucky, and um, and yeah, and obviously from Guido, terrific strike from what him. A goal. Um, it, it, it flew in as soon as it hit. It's one of them, such a great connection. It's one and of he's them. a player that doesn't get plaudits um, enough plaudits for me because. Obviously, we talk about the maestros, you know, in Canales and Fikir, and they're, they're, they're easy on the eye. But Guido is the guy that, he's the Casemiro of Betis, kind of, you know, doing a lot of work defensively. But on the ball, he's also very silky, can find a pass, intelligent, and with that goal, show that he can score a goal as well. He could arguably be Betis's most important and valuable player. Obviously, people talk about Fakir and Canales, but he's the super glue that keeps this team. You notice without him in the team, Betis are a, are a weaker side. You take Fakir out, it's obviously you're missing uh, the class of Fakir, but Betis have shown that they can still win without him. But you take Guido out, and it's a different team. He's he's the the crucial knit knitting that team together the great communication between the defense and attack does the dirty work doesn't get the plaudits he deserves but he's key for that uh, for that team for sure and Luis Enrique getting the winning goal you know the new sign in the what summer. a header what a header it was like an hour goal. weren't he just like the way he twisted his head was just like it was just the, like abnormal like old school header yeah you know? and something that honestly I didn't expect for him because on you know on first look you kind of see like a fast 
um, maybe like even like a winger, you know, even the way he played against Louis Goretz, the goal he scored there was kind of more of the, the kind of goals that I expect for him, you know, getting on the end of a cross or something like this. But, you know, the versatility and, you know, how, what are your first impressions of this guy? Because, you know, I think he came from Brazil. Yeah, Fluminense. Yep. Fluminense, a little bit unknown for the European eye, but uh, yeah, looking sharp and, you know, maybe another option for Pellegrini off the bench or starting. I'm very impressed with him. He came ready to go because obviously the Brazilian uh, league is in full swing at the moment so he came in he was ready to go his fitness is fine you can see he's like just like the team very green uh, very immature with some of these decisions but you can see that he's growing with every game the first couple of games you can see he was very very uh, uh, fragile in confidence um, but certainly in, since he scored his first goal he's gone from strength to strength and he's very tricky uh, a very very uh, quick player uh, already yeah m making good runs and um, yeah supporting the team and scoring some crucial goals as well and obviously the the, the goal against uh, Roma was uh, terrific I mean it's a great cross by Rodri firstly uh, but the header was a fantastic header I mean it, the way he he just turned his head uh, full swing and get the purchase that he got to get it into the top corner uh, at such a crucial moment of the match. So, yeah, he'll he'll give him so much confidence going into to, to the to the games that are coming. But he's already like he's he's at the ground running and yeah, signing from eight million, a lot of money for for Betis at the moment. But it looks like his money well spent for for already like the the qualities he's showing. He's already got international experience to the youth categories of Brazil. So uh, yeah, I think it looks like it's a very very good signing for Betis. And, you know, talking about the kind of lineup that we're going to see on Thursday, uh, do you think that there's a, such a thing that there's Europa League team and a La Liga team maybe that uh, Pellegrini likes to rotate from? Do you, do you expect to see maybe some of the names that we saw on the weekend play in this game? Would it be the same kind of similar squad with Joaquin and Canales and, uh, you know, William Jose up front? What kind of uh, setup? Expecting There's certainly game. an element of that. For instance, the goalkeepers are for sure. Rui Silva plays always in La Liga. Claudio Bravo will play in the Europa League. And you can't tell who's better. They're both number ones. I mean, the, the, the performance of Claudio Bravo was tremendous against Roma. Three really, really great saves in that match. And at the weekend, Betty's got a draw against Valladolid, playing with 10 men. Rui, who was man of the match? Rui Silva, the goalkeeper. If he had to choose at the moment, it's so difficult. That was, yes. Know, from, from Granada, yeah. I think. One of the standouts goalkeeper in La Liga. There was a few players from Granada that was, you know, were bargains. I think in this this summer window. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, for the because as you said, they have two goalkeepers, but certainly Ruiz Silva is the future. Yeah, right? for sure, for sure. And certainly you mentioned about other uh, players. I think that Borca is more the the player that will be playing in La Liga, and William Jose will be playing in Europa League. And I expect that to be happening. And it's obviously for rotation wise because these games are coming thick and fast before the World Cup. I think we've got nine games in in October. So yeah, the rotations there. Certainly the goalkeepers and the attackers are pretty set in stone about who's going to be playing if there's no injuries or suspensions. And then it's pretty much a pick and mix of like uh, Guido. Obviously will be playing in a lot in, in a lot of games because he's important. Fakir. He never seems to have a break. Uh, when it, I think that's probably why he's got that's an injury because injury. he always seems to be playing about 500 games a season. But the rest of them, I think it just goes on a match-by-match -match circumstance depending on the how, how much they've put into a previous game. And if not, then, for instance, like if you've got uh, Sabali, if not, then uh, Montoya and maybe Rui Ballot right back. Obviously, you've got left back, you've got Juan Milanda and, and Alex Moreno. And then you've got four centre-backs that can, yeah, uh, pick and mix as well there. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of interchangeable uh, elements there, but certainly with the goalkeeper and the, and the attackers, that's pretty much set in stone. It's Felipe, ex-Lazio player. Yes, a great match for him against Roma. He was certainly motivated in that match. I think the first player that came towards the Betty supporters at the end was Luis Felipe. In a and what a difference he's made because, honestly, Mark Batra, decent player for a few years, but I felt like he was a weak link in that defense in a lot of games. You know, he was targeted. And I think, you know, Luis Felipe... You know, clearly center back from this area. He's slotted in that defense. He's made a difference already, hasn't he? Absolutely. He's certainly another player that's hit the ground running. Yeah, you talk about quality experience. Many seasons at Lazio, main center back there. Many seasons playing in Europe. Uh, just coming to the international fold, international setup with with uh, with Italy as well. So yeah, you can see that the confidence and the composure he has organizing defense. Uh, I've seen games here that he's celebrating uh, uh, tackles like the goals, and you can see he's like he's a leader. He's he's a sergeant on the on the field, barking out instructions, and you can see that's just. Uh 
integrated into the team straight away and he's he's another key aspect of already for this season for for, for Betis he's, you notice a difference when he's out of the team as well and yeah, the, the four centre backs that we have he's definitely the first one on the team sheet and what about the Roma side of things because uh, you know Mourinho we know him we know his style uh, it's going to be very unorthodox for him I think to go away and kind of be, have to be on the front foot uh, or do you, do, you, do you think that he will still kind of keep uh, fate to his usual style, maybe try to hit bits on the break. Um, how does Roma approach this game and what do you, what do you think are the main dangers uh, in that squad kind of, you know, watching the, the first uh, leg the last week? Even though Roma secretly after, well not secretly, but he'll try to play it down that they need to come and win, he'll keep to his faith. He'll try to hit Betis on the break. He'll, I'll, uh, I'm sure he'll say like, let Betis have a p possession for the first 10, 15 minutes. Get yourself into the game. It's going to be a hot atmosphere like in, in Roma. It's going to be the same here at the Estadio Benito Villamarín. 55,000 again is going to be at the game. So I think they just like gradually bed yourself into the game and then try to like yeah find your rhythm. Uh, but it's going to be interesting the team news. I mean, uh, Dybala looks like he could be out injured. He scored uh, against uh, uh, Lecce. I think they, they got the win 2-1 um, uh, in their home game. But he had a, an injury when he scored. Yeah, and obviously, yeah, scoring against <laughs> Betis as well. So, I mean... Um, yeah, I mean, it's a big miss. Zaniolo, he obviously was red carded. Yeah. He looks like he's going to be out as well. I mean, for me, as a as a football fan, I want to see the best players. I mean, for obviously for Betis, it's best that all these players are out. I'm good at that. I won't see Fikir wish, alive, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I would <laughs> wish, even like, a, I speak as a sport, I would wish that all these players are going to be playing. Obviously, as an English point of view, I'd love to see uh, Tammy Abrahams and yeah. Chris Smalling playing. Chris Smalling. be great to see them come to play in, 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 uh, in this game as well. make a claim for that England squad. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they're certainly Smalling, He's played very, very well the last couple of seasons he's been in Serie A. He's derided figure last couple of seasons at Manchester United. But a big influx of English players in the Serie A. Yeah, yeah I think it's certainly with like the time, like J Jason Sancho and Jude Bellingham coming over to Germany. I think it's shown that no, English players can come over to to Europe and do it. And, 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 and I'm really, really glad. It's great to see these players that are coming over and playing in a different league and showing that they can do it. And I think Smalling's got a, a great opportunity to get into that England team. Abraham surely will be there, the, the form he showed last season and this season. He should be one of the, the strikers behind Harry Kane but all these players now one month six weeks to go into the World Cup they're all obviously not just for the clubs but they're fighting to get into these World Cup squads and obviously it makes it more interesting for the for the games coming up now right uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot David so score predictions for the game on Thursday I think Betis are going to do it again. I think that Betis, I think they can take enormous confidence from that game. I think the team's going to be freer from this match. Roma are going to come out, I think, at some point during the game. Not the start, I believe, but at some point, which will make it much more entertaining. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a replica, a 2-1 win for, for Betis, so I'll go with that. Okay, optimistic. <laughs> um, we certainly have, obviously, reasons to be optimistic. I'll go for a draw. I think, um, like I said, that Ludogorets game, I think there were a few things that I think Roma would watch that game back. Mourinho will be telling his players maybe some places where they can exploit Betis. As you said, the calendar is very congested. Uh, they're going to be having one eye on, on La Liga this weekend and wanting to bounce back at home, you know, getting the three points. So, And Roma, I think, will be really up for it. Uh, they know they have really difficult kind of work to do to, to get through. So I'd say um, maybe, let's say 1-1, one, 1-1 one. One, one scoreline. Uh, but of course, guys, uh, keep it locked here on Stan Sports because we will be at the Benito Villamarín on Thursday. We're going to be following all the action. We're going to see how the Beticos live a match day because, you know, we saw the red side of Sevilla. But I'm hoping that, you know, the, the, the green and white will uh, show us who, who's the boss in Seville. Thank you, David. My pleasure. For being here, uh, giving us your um, precious insight. And uh, we'll, we'll have you again maybe at some point in the future, maybe after the Seville Derby is coming up in a month time. Uh, but yeah, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you soon from uh, Seville. Ciao.